Welcome back, fuckers. Alrighty, in this uh, video, we're going to be continuing on with the SU25 Tango Beginners tutorial series on starting from scratch from DCS World. So, in the previous two videos, hopefully you've watched both of those. So we uh, went through keybinds. You're going to need to for basic flight, and we did a taxi. We took off and we practiced some landings. For this video, we're going to start working on navigation and actually trying to use the uh, systems on how to navigate and uh, land safely at airfields in pretty rubbish weather as well as uh, nighttime or you can just use it whenever you feel like it so before we get into that though i found another really 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 useful uh bit of documentation i'm just going to quickly save this into my uh my bookmarks because i will put the link in the description to this in the uh, description below the link to this uh this download and you're gonna copy exactly what I'm about to do. So you're gonna click on the download. Okay, click on this download button right here. And once you've done that, it's going to bring up your, you'll uh, extract the folder. It's called su-25t underscore documentation. And you've got all of this stuff here. I'll just make this um, size large icons. All right, so what you are gonna do is you're gonna copy some things here. So you're gonna left click on one okay so we want to copy we don't need the airport IDs because we've already got those in remember we've already got airport IDs uh, already in your kneeboard so you're going to be adding some stuff to your kneeboard uh, it's going to make life a lot easier there's also a PDF here if you want to use it on your uh, your iPad or a tablet instead of having it on your kneeboard you can put it on there uh, but we're going to copy these into the kneeboard in the game so we're going to click on cockpit instruments we're going to hold uh, control and click on ordnance bombs part one ordnance bombs parts two ordnance missiles Ordnance Pods in AA, Ordnance Rockets, RWR, Sam NATO, Sam Russia. I'm going to copy all of those. You're going to right control, uh, sorry, right click and select copy. And then you're going to go to your DCS, so your username, save games, DCS open beta. I would recommend pinning it. All right, because you're going to be going to this a lot, uh, adding things and looking at stuff. And you're going to come into your kneeboard folder that we went through on the other video. You're going to select on SU25T. And we're going to paste these in. Paste. All right, so they're all in. So how you see this, if you go sort by name in alphabetical order, this is the order that they will show up when you cycle through the kneeboards. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to change the names of these things so it's in an order that I want them to be. So we're going to change this guy here. We're just going to call it 01. This one will be 02, 03, 04, 05, 06. So that's all of my, uh, my airfields will be first because I want that information there. Um, then what we will do next, let's go. And you can put these in whatever order you want. So I want the, uh, the SAMs, the SAM uh, descriptions the pitches and their ranges and all the rest. Oh, no, that is my next one. So we're going to go rename. Come on. There we go. And this is going to be, we'll continue on. So 07, 08. And then we want cockpit instruments. Um, I mean, we could probably put that. That. Uh, at the front if we really wanted not too fast on the cockpit instruments though it's just a little bit of an in uh bit of a, a picture with numbers pointing to what stuff is in the cockpit so if you want to see that stuff you can have it in there um so we're going to go from here we've got our sams we're going to go zero nine ten eleven um we're going to make this one 13 this one will be 12 and then that'll do we'll leave cockpit and we'll name these 14 and 15. all right so there we go so that's the order they're going to be in the kneeboard when you're cycling through when you press the button we'll have our uh, airfields first then our sam descriptions then we've got all of our weapon loadouts so this is uh, the weapon loadout is going to be important for you because you're not going to know what 
is want. It's going to give you a description in there. So if I just open this up here, you can see it's going to tell you the weapon, the name, the type, gives you a description because it's, you know, you're brand new. You want to know what stuff does what is going to make your life easier. So you're going to put that in. So we've, again, in the DCS, sorry, your uh, username, save games folder, DCS open beta or release, whatever one you're running, the kneeboards and the SU25. You're going to copy those in and then you can change the, the name so that they're in a specific order that you would like them to be in. So if you don't want the airfields at the front, if you want the airfields at the back and you want to have the weapons information at the front, just order them in the appropriate number. Okay, and that's it. Done and done. Let's fire up Deucius and we're going to have a crack at doing some navigation Alrighty guys, so here we are. We are in the, the mission here. Or the, uh, sorry, DCS world on the main menu. And we're going to come over. So again, we're just going to continue on exactly where we left off from the, the previous video. So if you've followed along from the very, very, very first video of this series, you should have a mission already saved. It's called SU25T Beginners or whatever you called it. Okay, you should have that mission saved. So you're going to open that mission back up. All right, so again, if you're like, whoa, 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 slow down, on the main menu, you're going to come to Mission Editor, click on that, go to Open Mission, and then the saved mission that we just used before to uh, do our, our bit of a fly around and practice with our keybinds and all the rest should already be in there. You're going to click on it, and you're going to press OK, and it's going to load it up in the Mission Editor. We're going to add some things to this now. We're going to do it together so you guys can, uh, can have a play around. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to click on our little aircraft. Okay, so we've got an airplane group, it's called Area 1. It's exactly where we left it. So what you're going to do now is we're going to add some waypoints because in the actual game, when you're in there, the because the SU-25 is a low fidelity aircraft, you don't have the ability to put waypoints in. So you have to do the waypoints in the mission editor. All right, so if you want to fly like a certain flight path, you have to come into this mission editor here and you've got to pre-plan your flight before you launch the mission. All right, so we're gonna put in some waypoints. So you're gonna come over to the waypoint tab, right, which should already be default on, and you're gonna click on add. Okay, if it's on edit, you want add, and then what you're gonna do, we're gonna pick a few points. So um, again, if you wanna just follow along where I'm flying, that's fine. So we're gonna put a waypoint out. Uh, we'll just go here, All right, so over here. We'll just if you want to move the waypoint, just click on edit as well, edit and then drag it. So I'm just putting it on the FG73. Okay, that that uh, that square there. If you want to copy along at home, FG73. That's where I put it. Now you can assign yourself airspeed and altitude, and the uh, the actual SU25 INS system will try its best to get you at the desired altitude. So say, and we're gonna change this to metric here. All right, because it's it's in uh, metric. Okay, the SU-25 is in metric, so there's no point being in uh, Imperial, which is where all the NATO jets, most NATO jets are in Imperial, so they use feet and nautical miles and knots, whereas uh, the Russian aircraft, they use metric. So again, to change your, your mission editor, things you've got metric imperial all right so we're in imperial right now um you can see our altitude is in feet speed is in knot and then if i go again view metric click on our little guy again altitude is in meters and speed is in kilometers of an hour so we're going to change our altitude now so it's default to 2000 we want to get up to let's make it 3000 meters and we'll have a speed of uh, let's go 600 600 kilometers an hour. All right, I'll show you this, how it's going to work in a little bit. So now we're going to go add again. So we want to add another waypoint. And we're going to have our next navigation point is going to be this little, uh, this little airfield just to the northeast of uh, Batumi. All right, you should see it, the little cross there. I use it a lot. I'm going to put it right on the middle there. And we're going to make this waypoint, uh, we'll make it... Um, Let's go like a thousand meters and we'll keep our airspeed, make it 700 kilometers an hour. Okay, so that's waypoint two. Waypoint two, and we're gonna go one more waypoint um, and then we will 
do a landing. So our last waypoint, let's make it, um, we'll go up here onto the river mouth. Um, up near Patara Pot. Okay, just the, to the east of Sanaki, the river mouth there. I'm going to click it right there. And we'll make this one 2,000 meters. And we'll make it a speed of 500 k's an hour. Okay. So there we go. So we're going to take off. We're going to head out waypoint one, waypoint two, waypoint three. And then we're going to land at, um, let's go, we'll go for Kataisi. All right, so you're going to go edit just to, to, if you leave it in add, okay, if you forget to take it out of add and then you go to click on the map, it puts a waypoint down straight away. To delete that waypoint, you just press delete, click edit, and then you can move the mouse around. Okay, you can move the map around and it won't um, mess you up. So to make a airfield a coalition color, so at the moment Katasi is neutral. So if we land there, we won't be able to use a rearm or a refuel. We'll be able to land there, but it won't let us uh, get weapons or refuel or aircraft or anything like that. So you want to make sure it's a blue uh, coalition, or if you're flying on the red team, you want to make sure it's red. So you just, all you do is just click on the, the name, and then over here, warehouse and airport coalition, we're going to select blue, and that changes the color to the actual coalition that is controlling it. So if I go Sanaki and make it red, it'll be red on the map. Okay, so you can see which one is, which we're going to change it back to neutral. Right, so we want to be landing at Kataisi. <clears throat> we're not going to put a waypoint in for Kataisi because we're going to use our INS and navigation systems to make ourselves head out to Kataisi to land. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to change the weather now. So we're going to go time and date. So again, if you're still super uh, new to this, don't worry about changing the weather too much. Um, just leave it on a clear day so you've got less things to do but i'm just going to make the weather a little bit more gross by bringing it down the uh the base level we're going to make it at 700 meters okay so there's going to be clouds starting at 700 meters instead of up at 2500 meters okay so 700 meters <clears throat> there we go all right, so that is it. So it's going to be a uh, an overcast. So we're not going to be able to see Kataisi potentially, and we're going to have to rely on flying our instruments a bit more and actually doing a landing. So we're going to have a crack at that. We may crash. We'll see. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you're still brand new and you're like, whoa, 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 don't do that. Just put the weather on, you know, light scattered or nothing. Have no 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 weather. So it's just pure nice nice cloudy nah, cloud free day. Good viz, you don't have to worry about uh, any clouds or anything like that. But if you feel up for the challenge, copy me. We're on broken five, 700 meters. All right, so then we're going to go far. We're going to press save. And we're going to start flying this mission. All right, we're going to do it together. So today we're going to learn how to use navigation in the SU-25. All righty, guys. So we are in the SU-25. We spawned in on... The ground so again i'll show you the knee boards that we just put in at the start of the video if you, so if you press right shift and k and then you want to press the little square brackets next to p on the on the keyboard papa on the keyboard i'm going to press the square bracket to the right and it's going to cycle so you got waypoint one gives you an overview and then as we go through here we go so this is the order we put them in remember so all of our airfields will be and then our next one will be the uh, the SAMs. SAMs, SAMs, and then it'll go into the bombs, bombs, missiles, rockets, pods, and fuel tanks, air-to-air -air missiles, cockpits, and the RWR. And then it goes back to the start. So that's the order that we put in the very start of the video. Okay, so we're just going to leave it on caucus. That's what we want. And then just right shift K will get rid of it. If you just want to glance at that, you just press K on the keyboard. And when you hold it, it'll stay up. And then if you want to let it go, let it go. You can also uh, drag this. If you press uh, right shift K, you can move this. If you don't like it over there, you can take it over to the left, move it to the right, wherever you want it to be. And I'm just going to leave it on the right. So you can move that on the screen as well. <clears throat> 
All right, so let's start this thing up. So right shift L, get the lights on, and we're going to, uh, we're gonna get a rearm. Just, I wanted to change my uh, skin color. So again, if you go to external view, if you don't like the, um, this bar down the bottom here, I don't like it, I don't think it looks nice. It's cool if you wanna see like airspeed and heading and all that kind of stuff, but when you're just um, making videos, it doesn't look cool having a, an information bar on the bottom there. So all you do is just press, uh, I think it's right alt Yankee. No, right, con uh, sorry, left control Yankee on the keyboard. Left control Yankee once, twice, and it disappears. Okay, and if you wanted to come bring it back up, left control Yankee. So it cycles between indicated airspeed, true speed, and then it disappears. And then uh, also if you want to change your uh, location, so your grid referencing, your coordinate coordinates, you press left alt Yankee and it changes between the lot as well. All right, useless information that you probably don't really need right now, but there you go. All right, so we're gonna press uh, left alt and apostrophe, which brings up our resources rearm refuel screen, and we're just gonna change our skin and I'm gonna change the the, uh, the number to zero six nine giggity just because. There we go. So we load up. Air crew is gonna or ground crew is gonna do a rearm and refuel because that's what you've done. So they're not gonna put anything onto the aircraft because we don't have any stores selected. We didn't put any bombs on. And the fuel's already full, so it's not going to be an issue. If you are going to do a rearm, though, okay, or get fuel when you land, you need to have both engines turned off, shut down, fully shut down, and the canopy open. Otherwise, ground crew will not rearm you or refuel you as well. All right, so let's start this bad boy up. So we're going to start up. So you can start up both. Rearming complete. Rearming complete. Yep, there you go. And then it'll say refueling or refueling and rearming is done. So you can start up both engines at the same time. Um, so I'm just going to flick engine start right, engine start left at the same time. It's not going to hurt it. And you can see they're both spooling up at the same time. Both needles are moving. We've got both green lights on here. And again, in that uh, lovely little knee board there, scroll all the way. There you go, you got a little cockpit instrument. So if you're like, what the hell is this thing? You can have a look. So number five would be our attitude director indicator, the ADI. Is that guy? So you can see all that stuff. It's paying for itself, that knee board. All right, so we've got both engines are started. And we are going to set our flaps. So on the flaps here, um, if you press F on the keyboard once, It'll put the flaps to half. So that's our flap switch there. You can't click on it with the cockpit. And we've got the uh, the one layer of flaps. You press F again, it'll put the flaps back up. So F only cycles between landing, uh, sorry, takeoff flaps and uh, flaps up. You need to actually assign um, for landing flaps, you need to actually assign flaps landing position. So all press left shift F. All right, so when you're taking off, you just have to press F. You just want one level of flaps. And then when you're landing, you want to go two levels of flaps. And they should go two lights. Okay, so flaps. So it's going to go back to one level. Take off. We're going to shut the canopy. Left control, Charlie. And we're going to bring on our... I'm going to just turn our HUD up. Okay, and I went through how to do all this stuff in the video before with Bind, so if you don't know what I'm doing, go back and watch the video and you'll be on board with what we're doing here. Uh, we're going to turn our nav lights on, on the wingtips, so they're flashing, they look cool. We're going to put our landing lights on, taxi lights, there we go, lights are on, and we are good to taxi. All right. Let's run them up. So at about 60-ish percent engine RPM, we start moving forward. There we go. We're just going to taxi out over onto the airfield. So you can see we do have a an overcast. 
All right, we should actually go through... Um, actually go through ATC as well because it's pretty straightforward on this so the uh, the command you use on the F3, FC3 aircraft the keyboard bind is above the enter key the the backslash or the forward slash I don't know which one is one of the slash keys above enter you press that and this will bring up your um, ATC okay so it's simplified uh, radio controls compared to like the F-18 Hornet and stuff where you've got different comms that's so in this aircraft in particular the F SC-25 it's just one one uh, key press which is backslash will bring up your radio to talk to everything okay, you can talk to uh, you can talk to ATC you can talk to other aircraft in your flight you can talk to AWACS you can do all that stuff off of the one line so we're going to hold short here at these uh, these red lights and we're going to request takeoff because you should do this in the habit of doing this because they are going to eventually Rework. It's pressing my toe brakes instead of the actual brakes. Um, they are going to rework the ATC eventually, and um, I know it's probably going to bite me now because I never use it, but we probably should. So we're going to say you can either click on the button F1, request takeoff. You can click on it with the mouse, or you can press the actual keyboard F1. Me, and field. and one, one, request, request takeoff. Takeoff, and we'll get cleared to takeoff. because we're a little bit away. Let's push forward a bit. When we taxi out, you should say uh, clear for takeoff. Let's do it again. Batumi, in field, one, one, request takeoff. In field, one, one, okay. Batumi, you are cleared for takeoff already. Climb 300 at QFE 759 decimal 24. 759 decimal 24 UFE. So let's just taxi out. I just want to check something here. If we can actually adjust the altimeter or not. So I'm just going to press uh, left alt B. Brings up your mission briefing window. And I'm throwing all this stuff at you. Uh, so our QFE is 759.11. <clears throat> millimeters of mercury okay so that is our altitude at Batumi all right and that means if we tune our altimeter which is this guy to 759.11 our altimeter will read zero feet okay so at the moment it's reading our altimeter is reading you know, 10 feet so it's a little bit above. So it's not bad, but it's not perfect. And I'm just going to have a quick squiz now. Let's have a look. Uh, search for altimeter pressure decrease increase. There we go. You can do it. So I'm going to change this bind just because um, I'm not going to remember that. So I'm going to clear that. And I'm going to clear this. And I'm going to go... Increase is going to be the plus next to on the top of the keyboard where the numbers are one to nine. So plus and then decrease is going to be minus. All right, don't worry about radar, you're going to rebind that stuff or you'll change it to something with your um, your keybinds when we get to that at a later date. And there we go. Okay, so we've got increase and decrease. So again, we wanted the number was. Is 759.11. If I press decrease now on that bind that we just did, did just did 759. And there you go. Zero. So when you radio into a airfield, um, they're gonna tell you the QFE for the particular airfield. So say when we're gonna land at um, up here at Katasi at the end of our flight. This is going to be a different QFE to this because it's going to be a different elevation potentially to Batumi. So we might have a different elevation. So you always want to tune your altimeter to the airfield that you're intending on landing on. Okay. So when we are radio in to Kovaletti to land, we will uh, get the QFE and we'll change it so that we're good to go. And then that way our altimeter is set at the right actual 
readings so we don't crash and die. Okay, so now we're going to go through taking off and using navigation. So adjust control. So we are going to be using the bind number one on the keyboard, which is navigation modes. So you can press number one and it's going to cycle through the different types. And we're going to run through those types in this sortie. So I'm going to take off in a second. So I'm going to press number one now. And we are on en route. Okay, en route mode. And we are 0 0.5 kilometers from waypoint zero, which was our start point, which was where we spawned in. Okay, over there. That's where we started. Zero is our waypoint. To change your waypoints, let me just double check the binds. Next waypoint is left control plus tilde or right shift plus tilde. Okay, just select next or previous. Um, just think, what do I, do I want to change? I'm going to change that. For me, you don't have to change this, but I'm going to change it for me. I'm going to change it to the, the arrow keys up and down. All right, so I'm just doing this. So next waypoint is going to be arrow up. Next waypoint, sorry, previous uh, waypoint. And don't worry if it uh, unbinds stuff because you, if you're using a, a joystick, you're not you're going to use the arrow keys. Okay, so they're free keys to use. So up and down is going to change my waypoints now. So if I press up on the arrow key, and see it goes to waypoint one. So now on our F10 map, if I click on us, you're going to show us. It's not going to show us. Sometimes it does. All right. Sometimes it'll show you a waypoint plan. But anyways, because we uh, we did the we did make the waypoint in the mission editor together, we can see that our, our waypoint is forty nine point eight kilometers away. We need a an altitude of three thousand meters because that's what we set it to, and that's our airspeed we want five hundred and ninety kilometers now. I think we set it to six hundred. It's close enough. All right, and then this little circle here, this is our director to get us to the waypoint. So we need to put this cross here on that circle and fly to the waypoint. All right, so we're going to take off and we will head over there. And then you also got down here on your HSI, 50 kilometers, bearing 297 is uh, where we want to head to get ourselves onto the course line. Um, don't worry about that. We're just going to take off and then we will uh, line this bad boy up. Righto, brakes on. Enough talking. Let's run this up. So we're going to go up to full power. As soon as the brakes start, we brakes off. And again, we're looking at an airspeed of around 180 kilometers an hour. We're going to start gently pulling back on the stick. Using rudder just to keep yourself straight and level. Pulling back on the stick now. Yeah. Go, come on, get up. Alrighty, we're going to press G for gear. And then once that flaps get over around 400 knots, 400 kilometers now, you want to put your flaps up. There we go, flaps up. And we've got all our indicators are off. We're going to bring the throttles back a touch now. And we're just going to fly this circle and just chase it. We are in a climb. So it's wanting us to climb up right now. So you don't have to follow it straight, like perfectly. Just know it's gonna, it wants us to be at 3000 meters. And you can see there's a difference here. I'm just gonna pause it right now. All right, so paused on the screen. This number here, this is our radar altimeter. So we're currently 915 meters above the ground underneath us. As soon as we get through, I think it's 1500 meters, it's gonna to switch to barometric altimeter pressure, which is this guy right here. Okay, and that guy right there is what we're, uh, we're gonna be flying off. So it'll switch to whatever that's saying when we get above 1500, so we're gonna be at 3000, 3000 meters. 
Let's go, continuing on. So it does want to nose up quite a lot, so I'm just hitting trim. Let's bring my controls up, um, right control, enter. Brings up the controls. <clears throat> We're just following that circle. You can see our range is counting down, 38.5. And it has changed now. We're not have a flag. We don't have an R, so we're in uh, barometric altitude now. So I'm just keeping it roughly leveled on the circle, okay, or in line with the circle. I'm not trying to get it exactly in the center because it's going to start leveling off here. Yeah. Alright, so we're just going to descend down a little bit and just try and get these two together. So this only matters if you want to be at a certain altitude. Okay, if you don't care about the altitude, all you need to worry about is that this circle is in line with the center of your cross. So say you had, uh, we put the waypoint down at sea level, okay, this circle would be pointing at the ground. So you just line up the circle with the center of your cross and just fly out whatever else you want. So 26 miles away and then same with the airspeed we set an actual airspeed that we wanted to target um, so that is why our airspeed is 650 and it because we set the airspeed in the waypoint in the mission editor it's telling us we need to be at 510 indicated to match the airspeed that we set in the actual uh, the mission editor All right, but it's not necessary to meet those things exactly. The main thing is you're flying towards the waypoint. And again, I've just trimmed. I'm not using any inputs. I'm not touching my stick. I'm just using my trim just to try and keep my aircraft flying straight and level. So it's wanting to come up just a touch. I'm going to trim it nose down one little bit. Come left just a little bit. Case. eight kilometers to waypoint number two or number one so as soon as we get there this is going to update automatically and it will go to waypoint number two five k's so as soon as we get to this counts down to zero it's going to update to number two. I'm going to go on a right hand turn. It's going to make us fly that way. And here we go. We're in waypoint two. It's over to our right. So again, now because we changed the uh, the actual uh, altitude to a thousand meters for waypoint two in the mission editor, you can see it says a thousand now, and our airspeed is five ten indicated what we want. So we're just going to come around. And we're looking at a bearing of 085 is where we want to roll out. So this little guy here on the uh, the HSI, this is our heading that we want to be heading to, that little yellow line. That's where our waypoint is. We're just going to keep coming right. We're going to descend down to 1,000 at the same time. Okay, so you can use this, your HSI, to get to where you want to be. Remember, this waypoint is the uh, the little practice airfield that we put as number two. If you put your waypoints in the same spot as I did, All 
right, so I'm just going to pause this right here, and we're going to go to F10. We're going to have a look at where we are heading. So at the moment, we're heading that way, and we want to come just to the right a bit more. So if we look at our uh, actual ADI, sorry, HSI, it'll be saying that the yellow marker will be pointing slightly off to our right is what we want. All right, so if we uh, have a look, all right, there's our yellow marker slightly off to our right. So that's where we want to head. We want to head more, what's that? Uh, one zero zero. So there's a zero nine zero, one zero zero, one one zero, one two zero. So we want to be heading one zero zero. So come right a touch more to one zero zero. We need to descend down through the clouds here. Almost there. Right, so if we uh, pause it again and go to F10, just so we don't crash, we should be pointing pretty much right at, that's where we put our waypoint, at the crossroad. The crossroad, the, uh, the, the cross strip there, the practice one, we're pointing right at it, okay? Now, this one here, this line here, this is your course line. So this would be if you want to fly straight in. So from our waypoint that we hit at FG, I can't remember what it was. FG something or other. Okay. The actual course line, if you drew a line from waypoint one to waypoint two, that exact bearing, that's what this thing here is. Okay, so we are currently not on that course line. All right, so we're just going to head, we'll uh, cruise a little bit further to the right here. I'm going to try and get this line here. As we go further right, uh, we're going to cross through, and this will start lining up with the yellow marker. And then once this one and this one are lined up, we're flying straight on the exact bearing from waypoint one to waypoint two. Again, you don't have to really worry about that stuff if you just got to get to a waypoint, but just say you put a waypoint in where you had to fly the direct path, because if you deviated off the waypoint, for example, um, you'd fly into Sam's and get shot down, then that's an important thing. So we're going to come right a touch more. We'll see what it does. fast and we're flying in the clouds here so we're using pure instruments to uh, re reference where we're at right in the clouds. All right, so you can see they're starting to get a bit closer together now. So as soon as they pretty much are close, we're gonna turn and put both of them on our 12 o'clock on the HSI. They're getting pretty close. Let's level ourselves off here. So we are fully in the clouds here. So I have no idea which way is up, down, left, and right, except for our little uh, All right, so they're pretty much almost leveled up. And then we're going to turn to follow. So we're going to go back to bearing uh, pretty much 090 in a little bit and climb back up to 1,000. All right, let's turn. So we're gonna turn now and put both of those on the nose. Let's just pass the 090. Okay. 
roll out. And there we go. So we're pretty much the uh, flight director, I think it's what it's called. This circle is pretty much where we want it to be. We just need to climb up because we are at 760 instead of 1,000. So we climb back up now. Into the clouds where we don't know anything. Using trim. So I'm just kind of referencing this circle and this here. That's where we want to be. Six Ks away. So if we descend down now, get under the clouds, even though we said we'd be at 10,000, there is the airfield right there. There it is. So we're flying right over the top of it. And as soon as we fly over the top, it's going to switch us from going to head over up there. Alright, and back we go. So we're going to be at 2,000 feet, 2,000 meters again. And again, we're going to head over. Chunking a hard right and lining this up on our 12 o'clock. Remember your coordinator turns, bit of rudder in. We need to go a little bit further past, off to the left, just to line back our course line. course line back up so as we cruise out off to the to the left a little bit more these two are going to drift together and once they're both kind of pointing at each other we will bring it back on course so yeah so if you're flying in the clouds right now and you're like oh my god i'm getting totally lost i don't know which way's up and down bang out of this, go back, change the uh, the clouds back to no clouds, and then come back and fly it again. We won't practice. Alright, so now we're going to turn back, so we've got a bearing of like 3, 2, 5-ish. Go. Go 3, 3, 5. go. Climbing up. You can also use this guy. Um, this is our localizer essentially. So you when that's dead straight down the middle. And this line here is our altitude that it wants to be at. So we want to get that crossed as well. So we can pretty much fly both this instrument right here. All right, so if it starts cruising up, it means you need to climb to catch it. You can see there our altitude is mismatched. And this guy. We want to make sure we come and just touch to the right to so get that right in the center. There we go. I'm just trying to get these two yellow crosses here lined up. Now we're a bit high. Nine, nine kilometers away from our waypoint. going to descend down now 2000 so this is all uh, skills you need to practice to learn how to fly because you know, sometimes you're not going to have beautiful weather to fly in and you might have to use uh, your instruments to fly but start off practicing practicing this with um, no clouds 
and then kind of go from there. So we're two Ks away. Now we're going to switch to Covaletti on our next version of uh, our navigation. All right, so we're going to hit uh, left shift, windows key, and pause. And that's going to put us in active pause. All right, so we can still click on stuff in the cockpit. Right, we're going to bring up our kneeboard. So we've reached the end of our waypoints. Now it's switched us to return, which is sending us back to where we came from. But we want to land at Covaletti which is number 13 on the kneeboard. So, uh, was it Covaletti? No, Kutaisi is where we want to land. So we just flew over our waypoint that we just put down there. We want to be coming over towards Kutaisi, which was our airfield that we assigned ourselves, over to the, uh, to the east of us. So back in here, we want Kutaisi, which is number 14. So you're going to use the waypoint change button that we used to cycle between the waypoints before and we're going to go to number 14. Okay so this is going to tell us a new altitude and a new speed that we need to get at to get on the return which is going to set us up 10 uh, roughly 10 nautical miles or so behind the airfield so if we go f10 it's going to fly us user we'll find out which active runway is, is is in a second but it's going to put us you know like out out here somewhere all right it's going to set us up for our approach to land it's going to put us up at an altitude that we can start flying in and use our instruments to land so what we're going to do is we're going to unpause so left shift windows key pause we're going to chuck come right we're going to climb up to 4500 you can again check your uh, HSI, Horizontal Situation Indicator, where you need to be. So that we want a bearing of pretty much 090. We come right now. Over to 090. While we're doing that, we're going to press backslash on the keyboard. We're going to select ATC. And we're going to select Kutaisi inbound. Kutaisi in field. One, one, inbound. Field one one, Kutaisi, fly heading 0 9 9 4 2 8 QFE 756 decimal 15 runway 0 7 5 6 Alright, so you said a QFE 7 5 6 decimal 15 so 7 5 Right, so we're just going to fly off to the right a touch more to get these two to go together. So it's a little bit more important now that we get these lined up. Come to the right, and then as soon as they start closing in, closing the gap together, we will turn back on the bearings. So we're flying exactly where we're supposed to be because we've got clouds. If it was a full overcast and you're coming through the clouds, so it is scattered. You can see we've got uh, it's beautiful, but we're going to fly it as if we couldn't see. So these guys are starting to come together again. As soon as they get close, we're going to turn back on bearing 090. Keep our climb going on. We're 38 kilometers from our return point. And it's going to switch straight to landing point as soon as we get to that mark. Oh, now it's got a way too high because so I changed the uh, the airfield our actual height we want is 18,000 1800 sorry not 3,000 we're going to descend back down um, we're just going to press backslash to get rid of that from the top right all right we'll just match these up all right so they're lined up pretty much now so we're going to turn back to 090 New turns. So 
Let's descend down. So again, I'm just using trim, just to so I don't have to use much stick input at all. You can see our circles down there. That's where we want to be. Keep descending down. And if we uh, just pause it and go to F10, you should see it's putting us on A. Set off. We're here. There's Katasi. It's setting us up for a instrument landing to land straight in on Katasi. We're going to be landing on runway 07. By the looks of that, that's where it's going to land us. So we're flying in, getting ourselves organized. land again you can keep an eye on this these guys so you want to keep that one lined up that cross all together so there's a fair few things you need to like a chameleon with uh, eyes going up down left and right at the same time we're pretty much a little bit higher. All right, we switch to 11. All right, so as you get closer, it's just going to keep updating itself. So now we're going to de uh, start descending down. We need to slow down. 350 kilometers an hour. Again, we're just keeping this guy lined up in the center these two glide slopes up, glide slope and localizer. Low. Gonna change over in a second again. Landing. All right, so now we've got to be at 900, for fuck's sake. And 070. 16 Ks out for landing. Just trimming the aircraft. There's the airfield on the nose there. Put our gear down now. Gear down. And our flaps down. The aircraft's going to balloon up because we put the flaps down, we've got more lift. Trimming. You just pretty much fly this. So if we couldn't see the airfield, Airfield fly that Get more power on. And we're gonna say request Copy. landing. In field one one request landing. And that should put the lights on. Airfield 1 1, Patisi, clear to land, runway 07. Alright, we've got the airfield right in front of us. We're still low compared to where we should be. We're starting to come down now. We just follow that circle in. and smooth. I'm not really looking at the airfield at all, I'm just following that circle, trying to keep it pretty much in the center. And 
and then you should be by this stage you should be within uh, you should be able to see regardless of the weather you should be able to pick it up it's coming nice and smooth all right so we're switching to uh, visual landing now not looking at that circle anymore just flying the aircraft with my eyeballs. I can see the airfield, I can see the runway. It's up putting a flare in. Probably some idle. Bit of a flare. Gently, gently. And P for parachute. Parachute is out, I do believe. Yes, it is. There we go, we, uh, we've landed. Put our speed brakes back in. Don't need them anymore. And we'll taxi off. So that's how you do it guys, so that is navigation in the SU-25, so I strongly recommend you guys practice doing that. So just jump in the mission editor just like we did, uh, give yourself some waypoints and practice flying just like that, okay, using your waypoints. Because again, if you don't know how to get to where you need to be, you can't drop bombs on the place that you have to get to. Alright, so just make sure you are able to use your navigation understand how the navigation works in the SU-25. I just learned that, because that's the first time I've done that. I um, did some reading of the, the DCS SU-25 manual, and I watched some YouTube uh, videos of people flying the SU-25, and put it all together. And that's, that's it, so that's how you learn, that's how you navigate, and that's how you can use your kneeboard to fly to airports, and set you, uh, yourself up for uh, landing so remember the en route is for your waypoints return is to set you up you know on the uh straight in essentially of kataisi of the airfield return and then when you switch to landing that's actually when you're getting close to the actual uh the strip and you fly in your, your ils landing so if you're landing in crappy weather you switch to landing mode um and then if you've just uh, got good weather, return should get you close enough to actually see the airfield. And uh, you can just fly a visual approach from there. Anyways, guys, I hope that helped you. And if it did, go ahead and do me a solid and hit the big old like button for me. Got any questions, queries, or comments, throw them in the uh, comment section below. And I'll do my best to get back to you guys as soon as possible. And lastly, but not least, if you haven't already and you enjoyed the video, you enjoy the content on the channel, if you could do me another solid and hit the subscribe button and subscribe to the channel it helps me out a bunch we're almost to uh we're on our way to 5,000 for sure it's cruising along which is awesome so thank you to everyone that has subscribed already and if you haven't and you just hit the subscribe button thank you very much legend I appreciate you all right guys that will do us on this one and we'll catch you on the next one see you later